I'm so bad at this. Please don't worry about it. Okay, okay, whenever you're ready. Thank you. <laughs> I'm calling to order the uh, meeting of uh, March 13th for the Natural Resource Committee. Uh, we'll go ahead and take roll, starting with Dee Dee. Uh, Dee Dee Dalsford, Dorothy Dalsford, sometimes known as? Dee Dee. <laughs> Jerry Herman. Jerry Herman. Doug Neely. Nancy Brosha. Pete Walter, staff. Uh, agenda analysis. <laughs> I think we'll start with the process that we want to use put on the agenda in terms of the voting. Uh, we we have, uh, it's, it's not formally on the agenda, but um, we have two of us here that heard all of the interviews. One heard, uh, I think you heard three of them, three. is that correct? Three. three. Um, and I don't know, one process we might use is to Average the ranks that come in per person. He, he uh, you'd be only averaging his on the ones that he that he interviewed. You'd be averaging ours on all of them. Okay. Does that make sense? You're the statistician. <laughs> well, I'm trying to figure out how to do this. No, so no, I that, think uh, I think that sounds fair. Um, see how it shakes out. Um, we have, we interviewed Mary, Marie Holiday. What? Sorry, I can only build Dorothy Dolls. I'm going to rip this one up. Over. I'm going to rip it up. Oh, okay. Sierra okay. Schroeder-Halper and <laughs> Michael Hamilton. And I, I, can, uh, I can do that if you want to. Sorry, I didn't mean to simplify. <laughs> or we can do this later on in the agenda if I'm you sure want some more time to think about it. Okay. Um, uh, Jerry uh, is wants to make a suggestion about uh, based on a, a discussion he's had with Pete. Yeah, well, we're, we've been discussing the COVID issue for a little while and so forth, and he gave me a complete set of grading plans, which I haven't looked at yet. But when I enlarge them so I can see them better, I'm sorry, that's what I'm going to have to do. Um, I would like to see us form a, a committee of interested parties, because I think we could ha have some influence on some thinking. Um, one is, and Doug and I talked about this, if the trees are gonna have to be removed, it looks like at this plan base, they, most of them are going away. It'd be nice to see the down woody material integrated, including stumps and other materials. I did not bring with me, I forgot to bring them, pictures of nine truckloads worth of, log trucks worth of stuff down there, sitting up on top, that was, has been dumped by the city, not in a bad way for reuse because that was what Ed Darrow was going to do, the former de developer, was integrate them into the bank and so forth. Mm -hmm. And that, along with the, I'm going to say, 25 to 30 remaining trees to be cut down, and I could be wrong on that number, but I think I'm close, would be really nice for us to make some suggest suggestions about the down woody material integration where, where it could be done possibly. And then I brought, I did bring the, or did it, oh, oh. Um, David Frazier had, at the request of, I'm going to say, Commissioner Nassita, I'll give him credit for that, asked for an analysis of what could be done to develop a different strategy for grading the banks of the cove and creating, where possible, areas where existing trees could stay. That may not be an issue anymore, but if you'll see this profile, on your left would be the cove, on your right is the upper part of the banks, where the esplanade, where the walking trail and so forth now exists, and, and a better one would be built. You can see some people to scale there. And this design was done by David Evans and Associates at the re request of Ed Darrow and David Frazier to figure out a way, as city administrator then, to create enclaves of plant assemblages in kind of a a basin, shall we say. In other words, it wasn't just grade everything to a gentle uh, eight to one or three to 12 one. to one slope. It was actually kind of a, in a, in a flowing kind of design, which is interesting. It may not be possible to even consider that, but that's what David Fraser asked happened because Jim Nacita was very concerned as commissioner, and I was too, that some trees be retained. And it also included the reuse of the downwoody material in this concept. 
And by the way, I included some evergreens, not one Douglas fir, but a few more <laughs> conifers. So, um, you know, I was hoping if we would be open to this. I don't know if anybody would like to participate, but um, I would. Maybe this gentleman over here, too, uh, uh, whether you're on the committee or not, <laughs> I'd love to have your expertise, but you yeah, would? I would, because look at your, we're getting the tall trees in there at yeah. low. They can right. still look over them. All right. You have, to, you have to remember this line that comes up here is the existing profile. This what they're showing is kind of swales instead of just mm -hmm. a, a gentle slope. They're, you know, it's a, a different. It may not be possible, but I think the, the concern that was raised by Mr. Commissioner Nasita way back when is still valid. So, and, and I also it, have a passion for the, the yeah. raptors. <laughs> I wish I always say yeah. the wrong words. Yeah need to swish over and have some other tree to land yeah in you, you advocated so. some larger tree plantings i remember that and i think the i, I do uh, realize habitat that guy had he's fairly receptive to that to the extent Could that you get one of these to mike you might want to take one here sure oh yeah and here's another one coming around for pete anyway um, so I don't want to belabor the point, but then I, I talked to Pete, and, and this the grading plans he gave me are the first cut of the grading plans to be heavily reviewed by Public Works and the uh, Erosion Control people and the Planning so. Department, it sounds like, several different levels of, of mm -hmm. review. If we could end up having a uh, impact, it'd be neat, and I think the developer would, would be open to it. I really do. At all, and, and this might be kind of thank you beside the point, but it also may visit the floodplain. But that might also side? help with the floodplains if it goes back to the sixty-nine to ninety, sixty-three and ninety-six flood levels. The other two other major floods that might still be hmm. up in this area where yeah. the original ordinary high water mark is here. So, yeah, these are the preliminary, well, this isn't, sorry. What Jerry, what Jerry and I looked at this morning was the preliminary grading plans for the phase two that we looked at. And there's gonna be some revisions to those. All this stuff. Yeah, all of that for the detailed development plan. It's not for phase just grading, it's other things too. I'll okay. send you um, look at But that's really nice to have that in our hands. Some uh, opportunity for further review on that. But, Yes, yeah. I would suggest that you proceed and uh, maybe put in and um, bring in about two or three other people, whether they're okay. on the committee itself, and then, right. of course be reporting back to us if, okay. what that goes that right. on, if that's okay. Sure. Right. Is anybody else besides Didi? If you're talking in the next month, I'm not going to be around. Okay. So. I'll do what I can to, I, I can do something in March or April. I can't do anything next week or next right. two weeks, really. Right. But uh, but we, we could have several meetings. Uh, what do you sense the time of the final version coming in is? I don't know at this point. Um, I think they want to submit for the plans for each of the buildings in two phases. So along the shore, there would be a four in one phase and four in another because it's eight buildings total. Uh, but the esplanade and the grading and that would have to occur first. So, um, have they been issued you know, a U.S. Fish and Wildlife tree removal? I don't think so. Not or analysis for no, tree There's a lot of additional permitting that needs to happen if they're going to yeah. get started. So this they spring, may not be cutting trees this year. I think their intent is to try to get an early grading permit this spring. So spring I'll of this year? Yeah. Yeah. So, so that out. means they would be cutting trees in the spring of this year? Yeah, yeah, potentially. That would be after the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service National Songbird Treaty Act. I'll, I'll report back <laughs> on what Public Works' review is, okay. because it's all going to be issued through Public Works. All right. Yeah. All right. yeah. Okay. And, and all right. get you some okay. actual, I'll be glad to work some on actual that, yeah. dates and, and, all and dates and times. Too. Yeah, clean me on the emails, because yeah. yeah. if I'm around, I'm just really busy. Yeah. And so if I'm around, I yeah. Can. Well, I would say include all of our committee on the yeah. okay, I'll, okay. All right. All right. All right. My impression right. was that they weren't going to do any work below the ordinary high water mark. Okay. That that was, I believe, what was stated 
when we discussed okay. this project last time. The majority of the trees are above there now. Exactly. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Conveniently. Yeah. For some reason. All right. What's okay. that, Nancy? I said for some reason. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, before we uh, proceed, is there anything else on the agenda analysis? Um, before we proceed on the election of officers, mm -hmm. um, oh, we do have a quorum here. Um, whether we would want to have a full body here to do that? And sense. actually yeah. postpone the election of officers until we filled our other. No seats. worries for me. That's fine with me. Yeah, fine. Now, let's let's go ahead and then put okay. that off. Yep. Okay. Postpone that. Public comments for things not on our agenda. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Now we gotta go find my agenda. Old business. Um, okay. <clears throat> so before you, you have a, and I actually got some copies of this for Mike, so I'll give you, <clears throat> excuse me, um, February 25th of this year, we had a joint work session with the planning commission. Mm -hmm. Um, the purpose of that joint work session was to discuss the purpose of the Natural Resources Committee, how and when the Natural Resources Committee comments on planning commission decisions, um, an overview of NRC's past projects and accomplishments, and a discussion about the future work plan. Um, I took some notes during that meeting, and I just bullet pointed what I had taken notes on um, we gave a PowerPoint presentation, and I'm giving you a copy of that. Um, and uh, in that PowerPoint presentation, which was fairly short, we over we we looked at uh, this year what had been done in terms of influencing some of the policies that have been discussed with the tree code and various other things. Um, the decision to move forward with simplifying the Heritage Tree Code and agreement to allocate $300 a year for arborist reports to the extent that they are necessary if we make these changes. Um, we provided comments on phase two of the Cove um, and we talked about some other projects including how the Kanema wetlands would be incorporated into the Natural Resources Overlay District. Um, I'm the person who's um, doing that. It's We're treating that process as a zone change. The uh, reason that we're treating it as a zone change is because a zone change is applicable to a small portion of the city as opposed to a legislative file, which would be applicable citywide. Um, and uh, it's not changing the underlying zoning of the property, it's applying an overlay zone to an existing area. So what that means is the underlying land uses are continue to be permitted in that sort of, in the underlying zone subject to the conditions and criteria of the overlay district. And there would be, anyway, I won't go into too much detail on that. Uh, so that's in process. Um, we discussed a lot of items of mutual concern. Um, including um, the Heritage Tree Program, the, um, the need to explore a process for naming of local unnamed streams, geologic and geographical features through the uh, federal process, which is little, little known, but does exist um, and something that we want to pursue. Um, uh, supporting habitat enhancement and restoration projects on publicly owned lands that include the Cove, the Scattering Canyon area of the cemetery, Filbert Run Park, et cetera. Uh, discussion about whatever uses may be proposed on the upper yard area where the public works site is um, currently and which will be moving from there. And then um, based off of, this is all based off of our work plan priorities supporting connectivity to between the Rossman landfill site, the end of the Oregon Trail Interpretive Center, and the Cove and the River. Um, 
The priorities that we had put, we'd highlighted in our work plan include continuing to improve communications with neighborhood associations, the citizen involvement committee and the business community, supporting the Arbor Day and Tree City USA program, supporting the updates to the city's local stream and wetland inventory when funded, um, and supporting strategies for, strategies for invasive species management. Now, the bullet points that I jotted down during the discussion with the Planning Commission, I'll uh, just go through these, um, and you can chime in as, as you feel. Uh, there was a discussion about the f what is a formal mechanism by which developers can contact and interact with the Natural Resources Committee. So we, we've got a, a section of the code that's being updated to encourage that interaction. And um, there was also discussion about the 2008 Planning Commission decision to re reduce the required vegetative corridor width on the code from 200 feet to 50 feet. And the concerns expressed that that decision should have been at a higher level, either through the city commission and definitely with better communication and input from the Natural Resources Committee. Um, and we've explained that, and we've discussed how the current process is getting better. It's more transparent with better notice. Um, there, was a, there was a discussion about ways to formalize that higher level review. Um, for additional review by the city commission and what thresholds in the code would trigger that. Currently, most discretionary decisions about land use would reside with the planning commission with the exception of those that go up to the city commission like zone changes and legislation that ultimately has to be approved through the city commission level. But for a lot of these codified decisions that are within the realm of land use, the Planning Commission does get to make the final decision. The question really is, is there a threshold with respect to natural resources that really should have greater oversight? And I think that was something that um, probably prompts further discussion with Planning Commission and move forward. Uh, we discussed tree preservation, tree mitigation, um, the, I think the, um, one of the factors that, le that one of the commissioners said is that there's so much information that the commission, the planning commission in particular, has to consider in order to make a well-informed decision and a balanced decision, um, that it, they really just wanted to stress that. Um, we talked about the annexation policy and the concerns about um, tree removal on properties that are not yet within the city. Now, this is something that we've talked about at the planning commission level and the city commission level at quite a lot of, a lot of detail. Um, and I think the, the uh, decision, or at least moving forward, the, there's going to need to be a little more public process involved in that uh, before it's adopted. Um, we have to involve the county and we have to involve uh, the community who are, uh, who are going to be affected by it uh, to a huge extent. Um, it's a complicated policy. The one that is used by Lake Oswego is a non-binding resolution, but it does mean that it's a factor in annexation, and it is a factor that we have included in our code updates as a factor in annexation. So it gives the Planning Commission and the City Commission one extra factor for consideration of whether a, a annexation is truly in keeping with city policy. And annexations are highly discretionary decisions. And they have conditions attached to them that are, that come out of the public hearing process. And that is not necessarily in the code. So uh, just want to make you aware of that. You know, they can uh, address impacts that um, deal with transportation, natural resources, anything, anything like that. And it's part of the concern that we've heard about what happens when large trees are removed or when there's a big change to the condition of the land before it's developed within the city is it changes the character of that neighborhood for irreparably. So that, that's, a, that's a concern. Um, talked about ways to accommodate tree preservation in the public right-of-way through 
more flexible street trees, st street standards. Um, I think with public works input and approval, that is a possibility. Um, you know, we're talking about meandering sidewalks around large trees and incorporating new uh, standards for sidewalks that are, allow for root growth and that sort of thing. Um, and uh, with that, um, uh, was there any other things that you wanted to stress about the joint work session for those of you who are in attendance? I think there's two of us. I was here. I was there for it. Um, no, I, I can't think of it. Although um, I did cut out an article and I didn't bring it. It's in my car. <laughs> Um, I think Lake Oswego also said, uh, passed a resolution that when they're cutting down trees, they have to put up a sign. Per, oh, per, sure. A yeah. public sign. Um, just to let them know that this tree is removed. If you have something to say about it, speak yeah, at now or they have a, trees. They have a tree permitting process that some cities have mm -hmm. where you have a type one level review. We can get a tree permit for cutting over the counter if it's just one maybe two trees a year that are under a certain size and they're on private property and they're not in a sensitive area. Correct. And then yeah, they'll have a higher you. level review when you're proposing development um, and you've got to get a type two permit or when you're going above that threshold and you pay more for that review and then there's notice involved. So right. if to say tree removal is proposed on this property, whether it's a development property or not, then the public would get to comment on it. Which that spurs yeah. the public comment. Right, yeah. exactly. And, I, and then there's a certain level of mitigation required based on what is ultimately approved. Um, so Gresham has a similar process mm -hmm. as that, and uh, I think Portland does too. Yeah. Um, and Oregon City has not gone that direction yet uh, for a variety of reasons. You know, the one is the, you know, the, the discussion about carrots versus sticks and how you should incentivize things as opposed to regulate them. But beyond that, uh, we've also talked about, you know, staff, staff resources and funding and the lack of uh, expertise on the city staff with respect to urban forestry, except for lands that are under park control or public work control where we can contract out for arborist work and that sort of thing, and, and getting, and we do pay money for contracting arborists to do that kind of thing on city property. But, so that's where that discussion is, and I haven't seen any direction from the city commission that we wanted to move towards that kind of a system yet. But the planning commission certainly did. Is, as one of the larger policy recommendations outside of the current set of code amendments is to talk about tree regulation in a very broad context and look at whether the four chapters that we currently have regulating trees can be simplified, consolidated, and approved um, to deal with all of these issues in a, in a more cohesive way. Mm. I'm going to say uh, something. I was very disappointed in that we only had two members of our Natural Resource Committee at that work session. Um, I don't know if anybody reported in that they wouldn't be coming, but we had most of the Planning Commission there at a joint work session, and uh, and almost two two sevenths of our uh, body. Well, I guess two six really, but uh, one third. Uh, you and who? D. Pardon? Did he? Did he? Mm -hmm. So, um, yep. uh, I think we have to have a better way of people communicating when they're not going to be able to make a meeting. I, if, if people couldn't make it for one reason, I wouldn't have been so bothered. But uh, the fact that there was only two of us there was extremely disappointing. And we had empty seats. Hmm? That's not fun when we have empty seats. Oh. I intended to go and then totally yeah. didn't get written it just on happens. my calendar. And then I just, and it was like nine o'clock that night. I went, yeah. oh, well, I was supposed to go to a meeting. Yeah, I think there's <laughs> work sessions this year. Right? <laughs> Judging, we've, you know, we've got a new commission, a new planning commission, essentially, with four new members. And uh, they're just starting to get used to the code. And uh, right. so, and the code's going to change 
soon in, in yep. May when the equitable yep. housing and development code. I, 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 I would say our comments. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, or well were you thinking by the planning commission? Yeah, and I also I think so that I don't know how many working sessions you can put into a, a year, mm -hmm. but I really find when you do a work session, something gets done, and 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 people make a. a the decision kind of going on. There's real progress being done at work sessions, mm -hmm. and um, and the input that that's put in there, whether it's what they want to hear or not, it's listened to. I see that uh, they talked several times about the NROD fifty to two hundred foot to fifty change. Yeah, that was the, that was. Was that their decision? No, that was we brought it up as an issue. Pardon? We brought it up as an issue. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did, was it identified? that they made the decision to, to, to go along with well, that? Well, the, the, the they are the people that weren't there at the time. That's a oh. It's a new, I mean, it's a new ball. Well, it's a different, plan, different plan. I mean, it's 2000. Yeah, I think it's completely occurred. different. The okay. thing is, our emphasis, yeah. it, it shouldn't occur again. Yeah. Right. And they were really receptive to that. Right. I mean, but that was only with the, in relation to the code. It's not now I 50 see. feet. Routinely. Oh, right. It's just no, relation to that. No, no. It only happened problem. at the code, but the point is Your that work, right. uh, uh, we weren't in. Right. No, we I, in I know. I know. Yeah, we weren't right. in. They weren't in that okay. conversation. Oh, all right. Okay. Um, well, I'm glad you brought it up. Yeah. You know. Well. And we brought it up more than once, <laughs> just to let you know. It, <laughs> okay. it was not a, 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 it was not a, a, a one-time issue. It was brought up several times. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah. So I think that's something that. The Planning Commission definitely wants to work more on. Okay. Um, okay. Well, if you don't mind me asking, what are thresholds that trigger CC review? Well, CC. you know that. Code I don't know. That's, that code that's a, you know, city city commission. Sorry. Oh, city commission. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, I think. Uh, yeah, that's that's something that. You, if you're going to codify it, it has to be very clear what it is. You know, uh, normally things like that could be codified fairly easily. Like, you know, you have a numerical threshold that uh, a certain percentage change in a, or a request for a reduction in a vegetative court over a certain threshold can be, you know, does require city commission or is a type four decision, you know, that sort of thing. Um, or... It just means that you provide notification, notice to the commission, and you know um, there's procedural. There's a procedural component to it that we would need to incorporate into the code or or, or a policy. Um, and I don't know. We haven't really discussed what that is yet. Yeah. Um, an example of making a change to the code to require a, th a higher threshold review was the one, Doug, where we required that any new crossing of a stream with a utility line be a type three decision. And that was from the 2008 code amendments. Um, and it was a specific line that went into the code based on input from the Natural Resources Committee. So that kind of thing is doable, but it has to go through that process, you know. Mm -hmm. And so we will be revisiting the code amend when we, you know, we've got another, we've got other processes going on, such as the adoption of Beaver Creek Road concept plan implementation strategy. So that includes adopting zoning for the area east of Beaver Creek Road, which will be a map amendment as well as code amendment process. So the code is going to be open again this year probably towards the latter half of 2019. And uh, to, and it may include the overlay district review. Are well. they having a subsequent uh, public meeting on that? I know I missed yeah, one. Yeah, it's, well, uh, there's going to be many more meetings on yeah. that. It's just in the early stages yet. Yeah, but um, they're not far along. Um, we've got... Uh, the same consulting team that has help, helped us with the equitable housing code working on that process. Yeah. Could, we, uh, could, we be, could you make an effort to get us notified when those, that meeting? Yeah, I, I, yeah, Christina is the planner that's heading that process up, and I've, I will mention it to her for sure. 
and hopefully we can get a presentation fairly soon on that process. Yeah, because it's the the resources over there that are affected are uh, uh, Trimble Trimble Creek. Yeah, Thimble. Thimble, sorry. Yeah. And there's also these uh, you know there's power line easements there. There are some. Um, there are some tree groves that were identified in the concept plan and a lot of open space and, you know, trails shown conceptually in that concept plan that require a lot of money if you're going to acquire them and implement them and maintain them in perpetuity and, and exact the, from the developer that land. Um, so how that implement, how that's implemented will be a component of this process. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And it, and it lends itself to, you know, discussion of what's going to be a trail, where are the vantage points going to be, what are view sheds going to be, is there a possibility for interpretation and that sort of thing down the line when the community is ultimately built out there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, uh, under any other, any other discussions there on the uh, on the things emanating from the work session? Um, I didn't have a chance to talk to Laura about her uh, perceptions of the Planning Commission joint work session today. Um, I'd like to revisit this at the next meeting based okay, on input probably. from Laura um, and possibly from the other commissioners as well because. Um, you know, uh, there was time to, there's always time to think about things after the fact. And, and I'm going to ask uh, you, uh, um, we had taping of the uh, decision on the Planning Commission in 2008, don't we? We do, yeah. I, yeah. I, I think it would be good for us to actually mm -hmm. see that and what transpired and what the logic I, was. I there. think it's, yeah, it should be on video. I'll check. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And in any case, there'd be some kind of record of it one way oh, or another. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think it'd be a good... Mm -hmm. I, I wonder what logic process went yeah, into it and what the reasons too. were. Yeah, and I think uh, mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, we have a knee-jerk reaction, and that's legitimate because we weren't involved. Right. Uh, but I, I think it would be good for us to know what the logic was that went into that decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. To look back to 2008, yeah, most definitely. Right. All right. Okay. Uh, preliminary discussion regarding extending uh, the uh, code on the Heritage Street. Do you, yeah. want to, do you want to begin? I will do that. All right. Um, while, you're, while you're starting, I'll hand out materials. Okay. okay. So Dee Dee and I got together, I don't know, several weeks ago, about a week after we had the last yep, meeting. It's, it's about three weeks. Yeah. And we decided that we wanted to rewrite the heritage tree code and we didn't want to start from scratch. And so we had the new one and we had the old one. And so we kind of looked at which one we were thinking maybe of going back to the old one, but then we realized there was a lot of new stuff we would have to add to it. And so rather than do that, we took the new one and kind of tweaked it. Sure. And I think it still needs some work, um, but basically, you know, the, the main changes, and I guess we could just go through this, what Pete's handing out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we um, tried to make them sweeping and easy. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and there's and, still and some places why make where it I so think, complicated. I think I, there's still a lot of places do. where we could simplify it more, and that was Pete's suggestion, which I totally agree with. Um, thanks. Like the, this copy that he handed out, this is kind of what I went through and did. Um, Note we added our horticultural value to the purpose and, and way back at the end of the code, it mentions that, but it doesn't mention it up here in the very beginning. So uh -huh. I just added that. Okay. Um, we, from the table for tree eligibility, we specifically took out the redwoods, you know, the giant redwoods and the coast redwoods because they're not native species to this area. But, and we thought 12 inch redwoods, coast redwoods grow, a 12 inch redwood is about three years old. I mean, they grow very rapidly. Really fast. So we just said we're going to put those under 
other conifer trees. So that, you know, redwoods would still be included. They're just not specifically pulled out. We weren't dissing redwoods. Um, but we, we made any kind of a non-native tree, you have to have a 20 inch DBH, a minimum 20 inch DBH, which is not big for a redwood anyway. Mm -hmm. um, we also took out the, the arborist requirements. Yeah. You know, the hazardous tree down here, certified it's under arborist, definition. Yeah. yeah, certified arborist. Which definition is that? Um, under, it's... I'll, I'll go back to the other one. It's, yeah, this, one. this long oh, extended yeah, document. Because yeah, oh, okay. I kind of highlighted things. Yeah, okay. So yeah, sure. it, it presents a significant it. risk of life or property as determined by a certified arborist. I mean, I'm not sure that you need a certified arborist all the time. I mean, I think no. the city could... I'm sure there's people in the, the public works who could tell you that. I think most people can tell, you know, if a tree dies, I don't need to have to hire a certified arborist to, yeah, to tell, tell me that, that my tree yeah, is 90% right. yeah. mm -hmm. dead. So it maybe put something in there instead of, you know, maybe. Yeah, I mean. Maybe if it's contested by somebody, then they want to bring up a, a sort of arborist or something that says it. I think Pete's you know, comment was placed yeah. with the community development director. You could than, either do that or you could say by the city if you want to get even broader. Okay. But, um, you know, I mean, um, that way there's more discretion. You don't have an arborist report. Right. If in the course of making this determination you deter this community development director or whoever is making the call in the city decides that an arborist report is a necessary component of that decision they could require it without having it in the code right mm -hmm. um right. so yeah um if it's iffy maybe but yeah right yeah. so there's easy yeah i think that's an easy change to okay make. Yeah, yeah I, just, and we, 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 I also wanted to add that we need to make sure that this definition in 12.32, whatever it ends up being, matches the definition in 1704, which is the definition that we looked at Okay. Um, previously when we were amending the tree code. Okay. Um, and that that definition also not have this certified, certified arborist language. Okay. In my opinion. Right. Um, and then the, the next change we made was your third page. I, I highlighted in yellow the, the oh, major good. things good. just so it would stick out. Um, it went on and on about the fact that if it was in a, it was in the, the, the right of way, public right of way, that you didn't necessarily have to have the owner's permission but then in the back of the code, it said you had to have the owner's permission. So it and was- the, and, the, and the owner was responsible. So it was, yeah. it was contradictory. And, so I and think we should just take this out and you have to have, you know, notified and consent to the, you know, the, the has to be to the, the property owner has to agree to it basically and sign off on it. The consent of the abutting property owner shall be, cons shall be a consideration. And this is your edit, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I think there's some ambiguity I, here. Yeah, I think it still needs a little bit of. This was like something we were like we uh, need to talk since about. Since it's a public street tree and it's now going to become a heritage tree, the public street tree code still applies because the public street tree code requires that the abutting owner be right. taking care of the tree. Right. So why should not they have the right to consent to the dem right. to the to the nomination? Nominated maintenance um, of the nominated tree of this code um, must consent to the nomination, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rather than it just be a factor for consideration and allow the discretion of the city commission right. to make that call without the consent. Yeah, of the and government. and if you actually, when I got back to the code, the end of the code, it actually said that they had to consent to it. So there's some, there was some it, and it was like in four paragraphs code. down. So yeah, it was, it was way at the end. So yeah. there, there's yeah, there's a lot of problematic language the way it is currently written right. from a legal standpoint. It's ripe for challenge. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. So we'll just take all that yellow out and just say that if it's a street tree, the owner has to consent. 
Yeah, I think that's right. I, yeah. mm -hmm. The failure of the Ubedi property owner to receive the notice of nomination or to consent to the nomination shall not affect the final determination. Right, but then that's at the a, end it also says that, that the owner has to consent to it. Yeah. So, yeah, that doesn't even make any sense yeah. in the, in the so, code itself. Um, you know, those, those are right-of-ways in the properties. Uh, should a street ever be uh, vacated, that property goes back to the owner. Right, that's uh, correct. So right. it's... Um, mm -hmm. uh, the public is using it uh, and by law, but the point is the property actually uh, is, is part of the property right. of the owner. Right. And the owner's responsible for the trees yeah. and the sidewalks. Yeah. And yeah, and then with this designation, there's a higher so, level of protection right. associated right. with it because right. it's not just a street tree anymore. It's a, it's a true public tree. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, and then the, the further down, I just, I, these were really minor. I just thought that if we have this in the code that, you know, there's a form that you have to fill out, there should be a link right there. Right. To, yeah. So somebody can click on that and go to the actual form. Um, and then the other things we added were just, they were coming off that form, things the form asked. It asked for the approximate height, the canopy spread, the diameter, the approximate age of species. So that was just stuff that's on that form. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the next page, Okay, now this is where we made some suggestions about increasing the amount of time, and Pete actually doesn't like any of that. He thinks it should be even simplified more. Um, and one of the things I did was I went and looked at what the city of Portland's Heritage Tree Program does. They actually have a date that they have picked every year. All nominations for heritage trees are due by like May 1st. I don't even remember what the day is, but there's yeah, a specific right. date. And then the city has a year mm -hmm. to process it. So that would be easier than all of this gobbledygook. Sure would. Like just, yeah. we could pick a date, Arbor Day, I don't know what day And you are. know what, that, I remember reading that going, oh, how cool is that? Yes. Yeah, so because it's, it's, you could, you could, generate publicity off that at the same yeah, time. Right. Right. Don't you forget to you change no. your batteries yeah. in your in your in Well your we may not be and nominate your we may not be setting our clocks back or forward right. anymore. You know, so but, but I mean, <laughs> you know we could do May Day, we could do Arbor Day. Arbor Day. I don't when what date anybody knows coming date up for Arbor Day. Any moment now. Arbor week for Oregon is the first week. So first week of April. April okay. yeah. But uh Arbor Day is whenever you proclaim it. So we could just say, um, well, I don't want to say April 1st because it's well, April I think it's the first Saturday. <laughs> I think it's the first Saturday in <laughs> April yeah. or something like yeah. that. Um, yeah, you're right. But I think it, it, having a, a date would yeah. be because nobody's going to know what Amber Day is anyway. So that's true. Do we want to just pick a date? Um, April 15th. There you go. Tax day. <laughs> so it's away from yeah, April Fool's Day. Eyes of April. Do you want me to rewrite this piece? I think and my I'm, I'm willing to. <laughs> you know, there's not that much to do, but I'm willing to change that so it's not yeah, yeah, that time frame. That 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 so and I'll go we'll steal from Portland. Portland. Yeah. We'll yeah. Portland has a. It's nice and simple. It's yeah. easy. Yeah. What role? We're going to talk about nurturing. What day is Mother's Day? <laughs> That's usually the second weekend, who, who, and, but uh, uh, we can get confused with Derby Day also. So, <sighs> is it like a? The, well, the city board? of Portland has a city forester. They have a city forester, yeah. And so I don't. I'm. I'm gonna have to go back and read it. I know yeah, the sure. city forester kind of says yes or no, and they also had like they actually have a limit. I think they have so many heritage trees. They don't want to add a whole bunch more. Like they don't want. Mm. 25 big leaf maples oh. to be heritage trees. Right. So I think there's a limit to like if they get certain numbers of trees, so you can nominate them. What was that? Right. Honorable, so that's what saying. I was honorable trees. Notes. There was a there was another term that they used, and I don't think we need to even get into that because yeah. we're just trying to get heritage trees at right. this point. But well, I think that that's a very good decision. I I think it. Yeah, I think it provides a. A point in time for everybody involved, including right. staff and right. the public, to shoot for. Because right. I mean, we're looking at the time frame, and it's basically you had. 
uh, whoever this went to had days for that. 30 and, days, and yeah. then they had to send it to the Natural Resource Committee. But if it was on Parks property, it had to go to the Parks Foundation or the Parks it got very Board convoluted. first, and then it had to go to the. And there wasn't enough time in there, considering that some months we don't meet, and I'm and Parks is probably the same. Right. And and so I think a year if we just say it's due on day April fifteenth, and and you've got the city has a year to do all the processing and get back to you. And, and if the person doesn't finish their their end of it one year, start all over again. Right. Right. Which is okay. And if you get it in ahead of time, somebody yeah. could look at it and say, well, you're missing this, and that gives you a little bit yeah. more time. But like the final application is due. Right. Okay. I like that idea. All right. So that was that makes everything a lot easier. Mm -hmm. I like that one. Um, the little bit further down, it's a Natural Resource Committee Review and Recommendation, which is B mm -hmm. on that same page. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know that we need the time frame in here, but I don't know if you want any of this in here. This just talks about These who are, has to be. These are potentially just policies. Yeah. yeah. I don't need to necessarily be in the code. I, I do think you just just maybe you want to state that. You can't see this. Sorry. These types of decisions, yeah. these bodies need to be involved somehow okay. during that year process. You know? Right. It does need to so come the to Natural the Resource seat. Committee reviews it, and then the park, if it's on public land, the Parks yeah. Department will, or yeah. the Parks. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. But the time yeah. frames are not as important. Okay. It looks the same. Uh, I just going to have a deadline. Okay. Um, oh. Unless anyone has any okay. concerns. About and then the that. City Commission decision will, I'll just say it'll be made within, you know, it, I'll take this language, but say it'll be made within one okay. year by April 14th of the oh. following year. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Before you go off this page, yes. I was looking at your blue edit. It's complex. <clears throat> when uh, it was brought up that Waterboard Park had a, what was it, a Heritage Grove? A designation of the city commission to make Waterboard Park a Heritage Grove. That's correct. And okay, it was now, is there any day. terminology that's used to define what a grove is? Yeah, yeah it's that defined was some discussion okay, about that. The reason I'm reading yeah. this up, we said uh, yeah. which the tree or stand is located. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm oh, I, it's I, stand I, actually is the terminology. Is the stand the yeah, terminology? Yeah, we change it okay. from grove to stand. Okay. So we don't yeah. have groves anymore. We're going to have we stands. don't have groves anymore. Yeah. Okay. okay. So if yeah. you see the word oh, grove, there's tree stand. Yeah, it we says were really okay. hard on that. Richard Crane yeah. and myself and others. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Do you know? Have, do you know how that was designated as a stand? Jerry Herman and I did uh, going through the Natural Resource Committee. Mm -hmm. In Waterboro Park? Yeah. It's on the record. Uh, I know the date. The date is on the website. So we'd have to go back and look at the city commission minutes of that day. Yeah. Well, I yeah, believe it was because of the nature of the oak and ash assemblage. Yeah. On that yeah. Hill. I, I, just, I just wonder if it emanated from the Natural Resource Committee, though. You know, I'll tell you where that. Uh, Jim Vecita and Bill. Bill uh, yeah. Daniels? Daniels. Yeah. And others that were concerned in there about incursions, and I was too, to a point. But but then I went up and looked at it carefully with Jim, and I'm the one that got poison oak, and so I wasn't concerned anymore. I told him there's poison oak up here, and they, I kept them out of there, and I, guess what? I got it. Bad. It's yeah. only on the left side. <laughs> I've gone back. Cool. Back with your fact-finding mission. Uh, you, don't you recognize the plan? Well, I, yes, I did, but I was. <laughs> well, I was like, yes, I do. I should know better. When I get it and I go to the doctor and they go, Do you know what poison oak is? And I go, I'm a botanist. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> they got one of the most beautiful leaves. They do, yeah, and they turn beautiful. pretty red. Right? Yeah, very glossy, very I mean, they're yeah. inviting you to. <laughs> okay, so the, the notice, all that notice stuff I'll put, okay. like. Pete right. made a comment so, about a section called NRC recommendation, but that's basically what B is. Yeah, exactly. And so I'll, I'll tweak that. that. I'll that's add that fine. over to that and yeah. make this much smaller. And then we have the designation. And then we go like another page. It's got site and condition criteria. These are the things that you have to to sure. meet yeah, in order for it to be. Potatoes for yeah, this is the meat and potatoes. And mm -hmm. the site and condition criteria, and it says all. A we, is the fact that on... Two pages past where the last yellow section is. Mm -hmm. Look at one more over. Yeah, it's blue. There's no yellow, it's got blue lines. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's got blue lines like this. 
So basically, oh, yeah, the yeah. site and condition criteria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The section before just is everything that basically says what it has to be to be considered a heritage tree or, or yeah, stand. At least one of those has to be met. Yeah, and so mm -hmm. all of these criteria, site and condition criteria all have to be met. The first one is the arborist report. I completely took it out. Fair enough. I said, you know, the tree is tree species is not listed as invasive and or on any regionally accepted plant list and proposed on public property. It has to the owner has to say yeah. And this is actually the the original wording that said if it's on public right away, the abutting private property owner consents. So it says back here that it had to consent, and earlier it said they didn't. So you know, you're right. <laughs> this item. Used to be B and now is now A or something. I'm just looking at yeah. the tree. Yeah. 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 So we took out A. A, is a was the arborist okay. requirement. So we took A out, so yeah. we've got A and B. And this makes reference to a protective covenant. Um, and I think, yeah, I've got copies of that covenant template language right. here. So I'll, see, I'll hand that out. Well, this business of the tree not being listed as invasive, what do you do with black locust? Every settlement in Oregon. Yeah, they always well, brought in black locusts in because they probably needed. not going to be a heritage tree. Yeah, that's really sad. Oh, <laughs> well. well, I'm just saying, <laughs> the major settlements in Oregon always brought right. the pioneers that plant with them. Right. You know, just talking. I don't. You know. Just, but that's the original language, and I have okay. no problem well, with that. Well, I won't, I, won't, I won't fret over it right at this moment. Okay, here's the heritage tree nomination yeah. form. That's the Clackamas County process. This is the West Lynn process. Okay. So you know what we're talking about. Oh, that's oh, yeah. This, oh, yeah. Is, this, this is the oh, common yeah. that's part you want. Yeah, okay. There's three. Yeah. yeah. And what yeah. Said, this is the covenant, so it gets declared. Right. Well, 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 the biggest. Here we go. More handouts for you. Oh. More These are handouts. other people's stuff, and oh. then the actual covenant oh, that if you get. Come with a story. Oh my. Okay, so yeah. further down on the same page where we took out the arborist. Okay. Um, it gets down to protection of heritage trees, trees and stands, and it talks about what you can and can't do. And when you get down to C. If the tree is permitted to be removed due to poor health or hazard, and is as determined in a certified arborist report. Okay, you took that. Should we again. just say as determined by the city? Um, because, you know, think, there's a huge black walnut that used to be on High Street that just up and died within a, like a month. It was fine, and all of a sudden yeah. I drove by and it was dead. Right. We don't need an arborist to tell us that tree died. Yeah. So I think, yeah, so yeah. here's the question I have on this. Um, so the Arbor's report, that part of it goes away. Right. You've got a recorded covenant. That covenant indicates that the city has the right to enforce any restriction or requirement of the public, public tree code. Right. Uh, what it doesn't say is that a request to remove a heritage tree has to be approved by somebody, you know, um, whether it's a city commission decision or not, having made the initial decision to nominate the tree. I guess that's my question is that how, right. how much authority do you, give the city in the decision of allowing the tree to be removed? Where does that interaction occur? Well, under the covenant under number one, may not be removed, topped, otherwise altered, unless the declarant or declarant successor as appropriate obtains a permit from the city in accordance oh, with the city's okay. so code it's treated, section. It's a treated like a public tree. Yeah. Okay. So that process when you go to that section of code, um, which is currently being amended, right. <laughs> to not require an arborist report and allow the discretion of the community development director. Yeah. I think that's still fine because, again, 
Mm -hmm. You know, it says earlier that you can't take it down because it's dropping leaves or fruit or something like right. that These are um, or blocking your view. And, and so if we're saying basically, this is saying it's permitted to be removed due to poor health or hazard as determined by the city. The city. By the city. Yeah, Just by the city. And the city and the city can make a determination of an arbor is right. required, required. Yeah. Right. Did, did you want us to comment on the Clackamas County procedure? He handed that out uh, just yeah, to give us some. Yeah, handed that out. I haven't actually read that. I read it. It's remarkable. <laughs> it even covers groves in a different way, a collection of trees mm -hmm. and a notable grove or or avenue or other. But see, this says once the nomination is received, I, I they'll be inspected by a certified said. arborist. Well, but advisor we says, certified arborist advisor to right. the hair to the um, historic review board or yeah oh. the historic review board well i know the that our county. hrb doesn't want to be involved in tree yeah. designation right they want to be involved in structures and architecture right. and that sort of thing right I just can't believe those mm -hmm. this, but, but this this isn't code this isn't the code this isn't the code this is this their is the this is their this nomination yeah. form yeah. so it's going to be a lot yeah. simpler yeah. This isn't the code. Oh, yeah 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 so does, what's our application look like uh, well, let's, let's get through oh, this yeah, first. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. I mean, oh, so this the application form can, can be tailored, be tailored to match. The application is form is Dee Dee's got. Dee Dee, did you bring your application form? Oh, let form? me see. I, <laughs> Dee has a file. Sorry, okay. the file is in the back seat of my car. All right, all right. I have an yeah, ID that, file. Our, our, our current application form needs need some more. All those applications. Yeah. It's a one-page application. It's, it's, oh, and then the, the only other comment I made was was the fact that right now we put these plaques at the base of the tree, which are easily removed and stolen and stuff. And Portland actually puts the plaques on the tree. Mm -hmm. They're drilled in in right. such a manner that, I mean, you you could still steal them, but it, it takes a it lot take more a work bit. than just pulling it yeah, out of the right. ground. And you just can't pick it up out of the ground and chuck it And they're actually the smaller. They're they're actually relatively attractive. And, they're, and, they're and they're the solid. trees grow up yeah. in, in the... Oh, and oh, hug around them on time. Yeah. Yeah. And, it's, 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 and if it the screws aren't devours. deep enough that they go in the canopy and the tree bark won't grow over. Hmm. Well, eventually they will. I mean, but they stick out. They initially stick out. I've seen old heritage trees in Portland where it's kind of, kind of starting to grow Unitarian around. Unitarian Church, you can see it right there where it's oh, covering it's around so the person's name. It's so precious. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, the only, there's you one other a thing here. Um, she did the fee, the penalty cut. for unlawful removal of a heritage tree is set in the code here at $600. Okay, is that still, I didn't um, know if that was correct I don't know, is that in the current code or not? Where is this? The um, under needing the certified or right, it's certified. right here, the, the D on, on the page, one, two, one, two, three, four, six. The penalty for unlawful removal of heritage tree, at least $600 four, for each tree removed three, or damaged. Four, 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 here. It's at the very, oh, oh. Come back one. the very bottom. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because there have been some discussion about that fee. Or you fold yours different. And I thought it had been increased to. I lay mine out, so that's why I'm not. I get it. Don't you worry about it. I'm helping you with your eyeballs. I'm just checking the code right now. Okay. Yeah, I can rewrite this and simplify it and send it out to everybody. You want me to send it just to you or just a whole to the whole committee? Yeah. What do you want me to do? Oh. I would send it to the whole committee. The whole committee, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll yeah. simplify it and I'll send it out to everybody. Yeah, you did a really good job, both of you guys. So I guess the only awesome. question I have is, is $600 a sufficient right. penalty? Or you not? know me, I'd always throw up the I'd extra say no, it, but mm -hmm. I mean, I, I would think There have been some strong feelings that about that, one, that from the Planning Commission based on the uh, tree removal in Waterport Park, and I believe the... Well, yeah, but that was trespassing and everything else. Right, and I can't remember what part of it. I could look up and, and see what about Portland is. Proof of replacement, and there, you could not replace those trees. So that was a priceless yeah. kind of a determination. I could look up what Portland okay. charges. But I actually oh, yeah. And then it's I'll put that in, and I'll, I'll highlight that so you yeah. guys can weigh in. Yeah. The 300000 bucks. Worth. I'm sure they've given a lot. <laughs> you know, you know <laughs> some, somebody that owns a million-dollar house probably would have no problem coming up with $1,000. Somebody who's... Uh, I mean, just, right. Yeah. I, I, if you I, want I, to take down a tree, pony up. 
Well, no, but, but the point is... <laughs> but it's a heritage tree. It's and it's not... It's, you're not right. taking it down because it's diseased or damaged. You're right. taking it down because no, it's a heritage yeah. tree. So pony up. And basically, you're taking it down without a city permit as well. Correct. And then if you're going to do that, you're probably putting something there that will increase your value of your home, probably fifty to $80,000 if you're putting on a substantial addition or, an, or another little house, if that's the reason why you're taking down that tree. Pony up. I'd have to pony up. I would pony up. Well, I will tell you this, that in terms of these uh, ancillary dwelling units you're talking about mm -hmm. coming, nobody's going to be charged for removing a tree. Right. No one's going to be charged for removing a tree. Yeah, because it's in that ten right. foot thing. Yeah, if it's an, if one of the, they're 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 looking at the code in terms of trying to make more affordable housing. One of them is right. is is building housing on a current owned lot mm -hmm. and a small house, mm -hmm. an ancillary dwelling unit. But if you're looking at doing that, you're not going to make your tree get declared a heritage tree. You're never going to approve that. Well, that's that. true. That well, is true. true. If, if you're ever considering... Tree, yeah, if they have yeah. a heritage tree, then... then that right. Would be but then you have to think about yeah, that's transference. Okay. So that at that point, if that person de designates oh, okay. a heritage tree, knowing that they're not going to put a, a silvery house on it, meaning I have never said yeah. the words properly, the but if the new owner the does this, right. well, now I want to take out that well, then they big pay the price. tree pony yeah. up. Right. So, what do you think about this? I think I'm going to look up what Portland charges. Okay. I'm going to look up what, what Portland does, and I'll put that in, and I'll highlight that value, and I'll put a note. Okay. Like I have the notes over here. I'll put a note on there, and I'll get this done probably tomorrow or the next can, can day. Can you explain? I didn't. I wasn't following initially the uh, sizing of the species that are listed on the first page. What that's all about? The, the eligibility. Those sizes for all of the native trees, that was what was existing in the code. Mm -hmm. The only thing we changed were we took the redwoods out and basically said that all oh, non-native broadleaf okay. tree well, and conifer yeah. trees should right, be right. 20 inches so in diameter. So any of these native trees, 8 inches, or you might know, whatever, right. can be considered heritage trees. Right. right. Correct. And right. they that size, but right. not small. Still that. Right. Yeah. Not small. Right. Okay. Unless it change are the sequoias. Right. Okay. All right. I can speak. Because right. they really are a fast-growing tree. And, and th th since they're not native, we just lumped them in with the other conifers. Right. Mm. Because if I left them there, I'd make them like. Yeah, three where feet. are the rest of the conifers <laughs> listed? Here? Well, yeah, it's other conifer block. trees. No, yeah, see yeah, down below, other there's other broadleaf tree oh, species other and other okay. conifer, should be oh, tree okay, species. Right. Okay. Yeah, right. To make it consistent. Mm -hmm. And they're just 20 inches or yeah, is yeah, the yeah. minimum. Okay. Hmm. Because it's not that I'm against non native trees because right, there's some right. very beautiful non right. So, and that's just why I added the horticultural value in that first. Mm -hmm. Paragraph with the purpose. I added and ecological or horticultural. Yes, you could put one in there. Yep. Mm -hmm. Especially yeah, if it's got yeah, a good yeah. story to it. You got black locusts? <laughs> locus, you know, huh? well, I can I could think of it, a whole bunch of black locusts around here, 20 inches more. I would say the majority of them overlooking Sportcraft Marina's parking lot, the city's boat ramp, are 20 inches now. It's a beautiful grove in the spring. Really attractive. You're right. That would be a great nomination. Uh, yeah, yeah. Then I will nominate him. I'll take the heat. <laughs> and you have to bring him here, and I'll argue with you. <laughs> and I'll say, save the tree, save the tree. Yeah, they do. I mean, it, well, they, they seed themselves they, like crazy. Yeah, they seed prolifically. But it's like a tree of heaven. Out of my yard every the tree of heaven. The city of Gladstone, I think, declared the tree of heaven a weed, and they're trying to encourage everybody to you know, cut them down. The thing is, you but they go through the roots. They come up everywhere. Cedar, Cedar Creek Park now, uh, 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 are are, 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 are in place. So yeah, yeah I, uh, it's fine to have it in there as a heritage tree, I guess. But the point is, it's an, it can be an invasive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that grove overlooking the parking lot has maintained itself very well without a, a bunch of suffering. I don't know why. But then they could be seeding, and there could be a whole other grove down river. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. That's I know true. I fuck them out of my yard. You might, you might be a fan. It's not everybody else. Yeah. It doesn't make any difference. They're a beautiful tree, but they are not necessarily you know, native. And I don't think there's any tree that has more color. Actually, English right. ivy has beautiful leaves. <laughs> poison, oak? Has beautiful poison oak does too. <laughs> yeah. But I don't yeah, want to. Yeah, but that's a <laughs> It is. Yeah. <laughs> so you deserve that. That's rash. not the issue. That's not the issue. No. Well, I'm looking at climate change. The, the so, locusts will take over shortly. They pretty well took care of the plaque thing here. <laughs>
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think you did. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I will rewrite this. Yeah. Okay. And oh, send it back out. Really yeah. 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 She, and yeah. she's done yeah. a yeah. huge round of applause. Yeah. Yeah. A huge round of applause. Yeah. Yeah. And Pete, can you check to see if what I have here matches the the definition of a hazardous or disease tree? Can you check on that and let me know? Yeah, and it may need that. It may mean that our definition seventy eight four needs to be improved. Right. Right. Or they may have. We may have done a better one before. I don't know. Right. So yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Okay. okay, before we uh, before we uh, before we get into communications, we should we should yo, folks. Sorry, you're gonna it was to be shared is to be shared with other uh, all of us. Yeah, before we uh, go before we uh, come out of our regular meeting into communications, how how do we want to deal with the vote? The vote? Yeah. Uh, my suggestion was to average. The two of us or the three of us, depending on how many did the vote. Yeah. Well, I'm only voting for two Should people. Should I leave? Because I only saw two people. I saw three, excuse me. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. So, so the point is, that'll be an average of three people. The others will be an average of two people. Sure. Okay. Yep. All right. And we're turning them over to UP. Can you do the computations? Oh, boy. <laughs> and the thing is, you can't have something that averages out to be something in a third. <laughs> Does anyone know why Paul? No, he just came in. And we drove. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's been so passionate about wetlands. Well, I, I know, but I mean, I'm sure he okay. has reasons. No, he just came in and, and just withdrew right, right okay. at, at that moment. And, and the first person was that uh, Mayor Holiday's daughter. Yes. yes. Oh, okay. She, 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 she is a professional planner working out of Idaho. She's moved back here. She's currently really? working on her um, wetland delineation uh, certification. Oh, wow! Yeah. 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 I was yeah. very impressed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that was too. Nice. Very good. Wow. I should have hung on the parking lot more, but I wasn't sure I was, you know, oh, hi, baby, I said, oh, hi, I always kind of hide myself. <laughs> <laughs> I do. They're really hard to hide, Dee Dee. <laughs> well, I, but I try because I never remember anyone's name, and, and I feel goofy when I don't because I have facial amnesia. And actually, Dan Haldi and I were on the commission when we uh, had that 200-foot uh, delineation on that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I talked to Bob Mahoney since we're talking here. Uh, were you on the council planning commission when the 200 foot thing became 50? He said, I've been on here for nine years or something, eight years. He said, I don't remember this ever coming before us. That's what he told me. Oh, he, he's older than I am. Of course he doesn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, all right. All right. <laughs> Well, and I told Pete this today. I, my attitude about that is un, unfortunate, but the Cove has so many other considerations with, with mitigation requirements coming, mitigation opportunities coming forward, uh, and the money that goes with them, that the setback will be way back more than that, just because of the need to create more habitat under mitigation funding from other sources, I think. But, All right. So... Two plus one, three. Mm -hmm. Two plus two plus three. That's Jerry. Sierra, four plus one. These are the totals. Okay. Okay. Those are the totals. Okay, we're going to have to divide them. Yeah. So, divide that by three. That's one. Uh, divide. That's uh, going to be two and two thirds. Nine, nine divided by three would be three. Uh, this will be two and two thirds. And five divided by three would be Statistic one, 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 two, three. Statistician order. Okay, here's what we got. Actually, I should have sent an interview right. so I could have the people. Uh, I will. I will tell you. I, here's what we have. Uh, um, uh, Marie uh, Holiday has number one. Dee Dee and. Uh, Uh, with how, how uh, you, Sierra. Sierra is uh, two and two thirds, and uh, and uh, but that's for third place actually. 
So actually, it's, uh, okay. it's Mike and Marie. Excellent. Mike and Good Marie. Year. But what I would like to do, I would actually, I would like to take a, an action maybe next time to actually form, uh, form a, a heritage tree committee under yeah. the auspices, under our auspices, and then have talk about how many members should be on it. And uh, Dee Dee, of course, would be yeah. on that. Yes, uh, yes. On that, uh, no, that's, that's passionate to me, and I, and I no. kind of have a plan so, for it. Uh, let's have that on as a basically right. a subcommittee right operating under the, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, under the, yeah. Uh, what are we, natural resources? Natural resources. Yeah. Right. Hey, Bob, Bob, Bob right. Marie doesn't remember. I don't remember the could, name of this that, organization. The sub, that subcommittee could do the initial assessment of the tree, go out and look at the tree. Right. Make sure it looks Give good. Give a report. report back to the yeah, committee. But also the to help us, you know. Right. Uh, 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 bring, yeah, bring public works. What, what about right. public things to the help trees? help form that committee? Well, that, 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 that'll be our, I mean, that'll be the action we'll take in the next meeting okay. and have an actual discussion right. about good. that. Yeah. And then uh, I, I would hope we'll have a full board at that time. Because yeah, there's no one's taking more interest from this tree thing than well, what you have, of course. We'll, we'll have a full Nancy's board. Nancy's made the changes. The point, the point I've just been that. Right. But no one's passionate no, about this. No, you have been well, I understand an that. instrumental in like, yeah. Yeah. should we yeah. do? Should we it's, do this? It's, it's, yeah. it's, the heritage tree thing is a, a, an important thing in our city. Yeah, it is. And, um, because that was what will make our natural resources areas strong. Yeah. Right. Or Enrod strong, because it means you can't encroach your Enrod into yeah. your idea of what right. you think was. Right, and I, and I believe the, the bylaws allow for the formation of ad hoc committees, right? I believe they do. Uh, we'll, we'll, check, we'll check that out before the next meeting. Yeah, right. And if, if not, we'll take some action. <laughs> yeah, I think they do. Well, I'll yeah. And you know what that all does is bring in more public... Uh, comment and more public involvement so that's what we're right after yep. is that what we're trying to get yeah that's exactly so, you know the more the merrier that's all i say right. embrace <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay now for communications okay all right um, anything you wish to share? Oh, I've you? been emailing and communicating, my crazy. <laughs> However, I've not got noodles and noodles of responses. Um, but I have made some um, really wonderful things. Um, with the Oregon City Parks Foundation, we were thinking, how do we bring attention to the Swifts? Took one phone call and a visit with the Oregon City the downtown Oregon City Committee, and I'm going to get everyone's name wrong, but she starts with a C, and I want to say her name is Carrie. Um, just visiting with her, she is going to put up swift signs, and the, every evening when the sun is setting, please come out and visit for an hour before. Excellent. I told her, I said, this is what they're doing. We have two areas. The Audubon Society already is studying Oregon City, two locations, the Chimney Downtown and Oregon City High School. And I said, why don't we make just a little picture of a Swift? And she goes, oh, I have a pattern. I said, yes, in your windows. And I said, let's use that one. She goes, okay, let's paint them with chalk, and we'll write down sunset every day for the three months that the Swifts are flying, and we're going to put it on the A-frames at the bottom of the elevator, at the top of the elevator, and when they put oh, the cool. kiosk, we have trifolds already to print. Do you have any knowledge as to whether that is a functioning chimney? Don't know, but I know that they do not want to keep it. They are thinking about condemning it. Now... The one downtown? The, 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 the owner, board. yeah. And that, no. that, that's only hearsay. It's only hearsay, no. so I, I could be purporting wrong. Well, we, we the thing is, the one downtown, it's in the breweries, if, that beer thing uh, on the brewery, corner. Yeah, I think okay. it's in that building, or between that it's building the and the next Cochran building. store. Yeah. That's um, the building. But it's an, it's an awesome show. I mean, that it is, is an awesome there show. There were thousands of talking birds. to the um, Audubon Society. They said, oh, we come out there every year wondering where they're going to go. Will they go to Oregon City High School or will they go downtown? It depends okay. on which predators start attacking the birds first. And they go, oh, let's switch locations. And then they switch locations. They have they have scheduled oh, watchers. Which there. high school are we talking about? The old one or the, the Oregon City High School? The old one. The old one. The old one. Okay. Yeah. 
The one oh, by my yeah. house that I've never seen them at. I, I, I wasn't aware they went. <laughs> and I used to go there back that. when my son was in middle school. Well, I, I saw well, them there then. Okay, what I want to do. 30 years ago. I want to. I think it'd be nice of us if we could talk to the owner and see if there's some kind of incentivization, incentivization, right. even if it's a monetary one. Right. Yep, right. That chimney. Right, definitely. I correct. Definitely. And then really start marketing the Swifts. Right, this needs to be publicized. Yes, think we do. of the people who would come to Oregon City and eat in the restaurant and then go watch the Swifts. You can't even get parking when you go downtown to watch them. You can't even park in the neighborhood. I always saw it at the top of the hill. Your crowd is watching. Have you seen it? Hundreds. My son and I used to go. Hundreds of people go down and watch it. And and up on top, like I stood at the top of the elevator this last year. I took the Girl Scouts. Oh, yeah. We still Thousands of people go to help. Yeah. But there's still quite a few people in Oregon City. And and like I've been in the top of the elevator. Right. And then also, if if we're promoting the Swifts, there's no reason at this point we also couldn't do Swallow Ness all alone. The, oh, the um, yeah. promenade I'll talk about because we could also we have quite a swallow population that is in there, there are a lot of swallows and if we give them proper nesting then I think we could get a swift and swallow population yeah, and the I've question been, is how do we maintain the chimney yeah, the uh, chimney is the main thing. Well, if we can't maintain that chimney, we right. might consider getting a grant to build a new structure that is pro that an answer that be Let's go for it. the perfect swift they structure. They don't like the new chimneys. Huh. There's something for about standards. the way chimneys pass a certain and, date. And they have a whole thing on television where they're mm -hmm. concave. They have to have a little lip across But it's them. also how the, the material they're made of. Yes, they have to be scratchy on the inside so that they can right. clap onto them. Because new and chimneys, so birds, the birds won't hard. nest in new chimneys. Right, they don't like the new bricks. <laughs> and then they have to be lapped over because they're three predators that can completely change their whole direction, whether they want to be there or not. Cooper Hawk and um, well, hawks are their their best. Sharp shinned hawk, Cooper yeah, Hawk. And, thank you. Yeah. Oh, and um, so anyway, we could actually, if we can't get them to decommission it, maybe we can say, can we put somewhere over there and build if we get enough Even if people they, coming? They could still leave the chimney up above, this is, this is and we could get it too far. All right. Hold, 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 so my, okay, you're right. My communications is going on. Just a minute. I've squirreled. Um, Pete, can you find <laughs> out who the actual owner of that uh, building is? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, All right. So I will quit. My it's the Cochrane Building. Cochran. Yeah, 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 but yeah, who owns the Cochrane Building? And yeah. uh, so if we're going to do something about it, we, we need to find out who we're going to be talking to. Right. Yeah. Right. right. But anyway, that is something we can possibly really develop yeah. along with Swift. Right, yeah. And I've also got some information into PG&E um, because they just recently put up uh, another heron. Uh, well, not recently, about a year and a half ago. A heron, a, a heron platform just right outside of Camby. You're just, talking about an osprey. 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 What did I say? Heron. I always got it. Don't trust me on a dang word. That one in Kanima has been there years. It is, but they fell down and they just rebuilt it again. <laughs> Apparently got someone hit with a car, and then they came back oh. and rebuilt it. Wow. Um, and so there's been some activity there, but not a full. They're not back nest. yet. Mm, not nips, but they, there was they a nest last year. Ah, oh, there was a nest last year. Almost, All right, then that's on the new year one. When I lived down in that area, the osprey, uh, the one utility pole there on the right. pole side, yes. always right. has a nest there. Yeah. I, got, I yes, actually saw. In the air, three of juveniles. They actually brought three of them into uh, one year. Three of them. Wow. Right. Must have been an experienced couple to do that. Right? Yeah. But so I got to see all three of them, and of course, the young ones screeching as they went down. Right. They yeah. had a great time. I love that. They yeah. had a great time. If we can encourage more waterway animal of and there's a lot foliage. of um, there's also a lot of bald eagles. I right. mean, I've been down Clackamas Park and watched the bald eagles. Yeah. You can be up in Park Place every day. Yeah, bald eagles yeah. up in Park Place because the so trees are up there. So we could make this a bird. Right. Bird we watching. Could, we could be a huge bird watching area because mm -hmm. we have that whole park along there. Two years ago, when they did the, uh, and I don't, I, I don't know how scientific these, uh, these, these uh, daily surveys of bird counts mm -hmm. are. Yes. But Abernathy Creek had the largest number per linear mile of stream of any. Uh, really? Stream in Oregon. They're actually Oregon? very fairly wood accurate. Ducks, wood ducks. Oh, wood ducks. Ooh, how wood interesting. Ducks. Yeah. Oh, wood ducks. Yeah. Oh. So I think that we should wow. start embracing right. our um, mm. 
Wow. Are, are, are birds. And I think that we could really make a really huge, um, anyway, that is that, that will be coming forward and, and hopefully we can expand upon that. Yeah. Um, and then so I scrolled upon that and I did about four other things, but I can't remember now because I got so excited about swifts and swallows. Bird <laughs> and herons, which are really awesome. Okay. I, I wonder if my drawings go that you gave me. Somebody got them around here. Oh, I'm someplace. The big pile. Uh, this one. Oh, there. That's, that's oh here. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. All right. Um, June first. That's a Saturday. The River Assets and Opportunities Task Force is going to hold another one of our successful, we think, electric boat tours. One at 10 a.m. and one at 1 p.m. And this time we're calling the backwater event, not because this area is in a backwater because the Columbia is gonna back up the Willamette as it always does, especially with the spring runoff we should have this year. And we're gonna go into people's backyards in West Lynn. We're going to go all the way around Clackamas uh, Rapids Island, Goat Island. We're gonna go in the cove, because it'll be high enough. Really look at things closely. So oh, that's open God. to all of us. I'll let you know more details, but we'll, we'll do that. That first one was awesome. Pardon? The one I went on was Yeah, awesome. it was fun. Yeah, it? it was great. Yeah. But the river was very low. This yeah. will be, I'm going to say, 15 feet higher than low yeah. now, yeah. which would be really neat. And to go on the backside of Clackamas Rapids Island, there's lots of heron rookeries in there and things mm -hmm. like that. So I was going to ask a question of the group. If you heard about the sea lion uh, harvest, what's going on? I have not heard. They're being very quiet about it. I just heard they were doing it, but I yeah. haven't heard yeah. any figures. Yeah. I didn't know. I still well, see. I see. I sit they, up they and watch. Be real quiet about I, I sit up and watch the um, river on on a regular basis. I'm still seeing little blackheads popping up, so I still know there's sea, still plenty of sea lions. <laughs> well, they're, not, they're not supposed but to eliminate them. I know. No, it. No. I mean, I'm just, they, they're, I'm just they're saying. They're talking about a specific numbers over time. Right. Yeah. About 100, about 100. So, all right, that's my only and, comment. And, and they used to be harvested in the past. Mm -hmm. So. Um, the Indians used to. Yes, they did. them routinely. And, yeah. yep, so. Nancy. I don't have anything, just the heritage tree code. Yeah. Now, the only thing I'll, I'll mention, because Jerry brought it up last time, is the uh, the, the Clackamas, uh, there's a Clackamas partnership of, uh, in, in terms of seeking uh, grants from OWEB to do projects on Johnson Creek, Century, Century uh, Kellogg Creek, that's the uh, North Clackamas Urban Watershed District. Uh, council, of course, uh, the Clackamas Basin Watershed Council and the Oregon, Oregon City Watershed Council. Uh, uh, up until two years ago, uh, they had open uh, open solicitations for grants coming into OWEB, and they were always two-year grants. Uh, they uh, two years ago they awarded two for that would be over three biennium and so the, the partnership would identify the projects uh, over that time to do and uh, we were we were out of the listing initially um, we made our case again and they uh, were able to include the Clackamas River partnership as a grantee uh, Jerry tends to exaggerate and he said something like 16.5 million dollars it's about oh, so no, it's six point five million dollars. I thought it was a total of twelve over no. six years. No, no, it's, it's, it's less than that. Okay, yeah. well, it's less than that. At least that's what that's what Cheryl McGinnis told me. I asked hmm. her, and she's recorded. Uh, I have to double check on that. Yeah, I got my information. John Board is a member of the Basin Council. Well, then yeah. he probably knows. He probably is right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, uh, there will be projects coming on to Abernathy Creek and Newell Creek as part of it. Excellent. Well, good. good. Yay. Very good. Round of applause. Those are really important yeah. creeks that keep healthy yeah. in our community. Yeah. What he told me, John Borden is the person I grew up with, very active with Governor, Governor McCall's era and all that was that the problem they're having now, maybe you know about this, is that they have all this bureaucratic stuff, intergovernmental agreements, and one layer after another of very technical stuff that the Basin Council must come up with to access those funds. Wait a minute, the partnership, not the Basin. The partnership, okay, <laughs> the, the partnership. Okay, so, and, and they're trying to wade through that, and they're kind of shocked at, you know, well, well that's well, the way government works. Well, yeah, <laughs> but we, Cheryl McGinnis uh, is- uh, Very good. And uh, John Rennie are the two prime right. on this to put it right. together. 
uh, also Brian Vaughn with Metro is uh, is working on some of this stuff too. He's got a lot of experience with it. Yeah, it's it's a little. I mean, it's it's a process like yeah. any other government. Well, it's does. a wonderful opportunity too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And, okay. Uh, so that 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 will be going on there. Good. That's Good. great. I want to uh, hear about what you, if you don't mind, what you're doing down at uh, Linfield with your program. Uh, well, last spring, the seniors in the environmental studies program wrote an OWEB grant oh. for $15,000 to begin doing a restoration project on Cozine Creek as it flows through the campus. The college actually owns okay. a section of natural area that's been pretty much a weed patch. Um, and, and facilities has recently been doing some work and we've been doing volunteer ivy pulls and blackberry cuttings and digging up and stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, last year they got the grant. So the sure. seniors wrote the grant and they wrote a few other grants to get additional native plants to plant in the area once the blackberries are gone. Um, and so that started last summer. Oh. Um, and so it's, they got about close to $18,000 in grant money. Um, which was just awesome for those kids. Yeah, um, so and it already yeah. looks like amazing down there. In fact, they're doing another spray. I think they're doing an IV spray this weekend. Mm. We've hired a, a contractor to mm -hmm. do the, the work down there who's really good. And mm. so it's it's really impressive. And the, the thing about down there is, yeah, there's a lot of invasive species. We did an inventory and assessment down like three years ago and found out that although there's a lot of invasives, there also were a lot of really nice natives even along the bank. So, you know, it's it's worth restoring. And we have the largest patch of camisola late in the city of McMinnville. Oh, really? It's well, just, you go question? down in April, it's just beautiful. Oh. Okay. Um, <laughs> Oregon City Parks Foundation just did an inventory of all the trees that the volunteers over the many ivy poles, you do the lectures and you've been there. We just did an inventory with Lisa Roger and I. We've rung over 100, 408 trees in Waterboard Park alone. Removed uh, the- Removed the ivy off the trees. Not, I know that is the wrong verbiage. It has to be a great thing about unchoking the trees of right. ivy maybe. Right. Um, and then we've, on our second spray, I think we're got ready to do our third spray. And then we, since we had an area that we cleaned out so much that we're able to take over, I think all these figures are correct or close to it, an additional four and a half acres that we can spray wow. for ivy. So we, we are still doing our volunteer ivy ringing or unchoking of the trees um, on Sundays and Saturdays willy-nilly, and then we still have four organized pole, um, poles and or... Cool. The amazing poles thing with Vegas. all this exposure that is covered on... Right. ...is you can see this tremendous landslide. Slough, I say slough that's going on with the boring basalts, oh, boulders mm. every place. I mean, it's you, getting to be really dangerous. Really dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> How many feet per minute? Like, well, that's a slide at the coast. It was moving something like... Yeah. Six feet I, an hour or something. There, 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 there are areas. Really that are I know, but you no, can probably no. see it is yeah. moving. Oh, you, oh, yeah. there, if you measured the yeah. one road, yeah. you could probably see it's moved yeah. to five or six inches yeah. over the period of two years. Right. However, now that the ivy's dying back, all of a sudden you are seeing how the rocks topple together yeah. and have these huge, really very interesting. Um, tunnels up and they come up in other areas. There must be dens of all type. I keep thinking I'm going to see a little face look at me when I go down there. But uh, you're walking it going, you know, me? I will be going down for yeah. the day. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah, I know. But I'm afraid I'm going to go, oh, hello, Ren. <laughs> but it is, you can see how it's just been toppled in there. It's it's fascinating as the ivy is beginning when to you're die back. removing the ivy from there, are the native plants coming back? Um, or do you know yet? You know, it's I too don't early. know yet because I staked a whole area on three poles with stakes, little green stakes with little blue tags on them that right. I made where trillium were. Okay. And then is, and last year I saw trillium, but not as many. I don't, there's, I mean, with all the boulders and so forth, there are, there are areas where you can get plants in, but there's not a lot of soil. There's not a lot of soil, right. but there are 
my marker, I have these two sets of trillium that the leaves get the size of platters. So those are my markers. And they came up last year. I'm waiting to see if they come up this year because mm -hmm. it has been a sprayed area. Yeah, right. And those have got to be some old trilliums, but it's only two of them. But the leaves are truly this big. Yeah. They're oh, yeah. an incredible. Oh, yeah. and, um, I've never had a trillium come up that big. I've never seen one that big. And yeah, I take a lot of fun we, pictures, we but I've never seen that. So, the sorry. Parks Foundation had talked about, and I was my hope, too, that the, the uh, uh, <clears throat> Department of Geology and Mineral Industries would be approached with a request to consider a significant geologic area and now when you see what's going on there despite in, in addition to the road slumpage and everything else that's going on this is perfectly you know eligible kind of candidate it doesn't necessarily mean money it means designation right. Right. Wouldn't it be neat to get Dr. Scott Burns or a future agenda item maybe with Parks yeah. Foundation folks and wonderful. see if he would be willing to lead that cause? He's in New Zealand right we've now. we've got a really unique thing there. Yeah. Yeah. I've never seen a top lift rocks uh, like this. My, my recollection is that's one of our goals. Yeah, I guess yeah. it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yep. Okay. Well, I'm very excited I've about I've got that. some emails from Dr. Burns about that procedure to, hit, to the best of his knowledge, but he also had some other leads to follow. Yeah, people, yeah, he indicated that, that that hasn't been done. I mean, the uh, Ogogami hasn't been done that kind of a designation. The what? On a geological uh, site. I, I think that's what his email indicated. Yeah, I think he, what he had said was, gosh, you know, it's something that's definitely, uh, it may have been more prevalent through the for the highway department to designate it, but I don't know. So... I think it's worth contacting ODOT to see what, if any, program still exists through them as well. Mm -hmm. You know, because at least there's, you know, a federal link there and a body. And, and then we've got this other procedure that we need to follow up on via the, uh, oh gosh, what's the name of it? The Board of, the board of Geographic Names. Yeah. yeah. Which is the federal there's body. There's a name, there's a, we're... Natural Resource Committee is going through that. There's two members of that board that we've been communicating in terms of the stream naming. Okay, yeah, great. And you, yeah. There's something like in a given year, those nominations for names have to be in there by November or something. Yep, there's a set of procedures that they've published. Right. It's kind of hard to find, but it's but there. <laughs> well, you know, they showed us a form, it's, and actually it was not that complicated of a form for the stream name. Right. Now, in, in terms of geologic... Uh, so okay. significant ge geological areas, I, I don't know. Right, so it's a, what, federal register, statutory rule or something or other, it's all embodied in federal re yeah. re legislation. Um, okay, it's, it's your turn. Oh, okay. <laughs> so um, yeah. I just sent everybody an email with a little big list of future agenda items. I don't know how many of these are actually going to get tackled in uh, April, but their list the list is there and it includes uh let's see sorry uh one second okay discussion of formation of heritage tree subcommittee uh election of offices following the appointment of mary holiday and michael hamilton uh pursue possible metro habitat grant for bird habitat along promontory or similar sites uh, Harris Tree Code updates, Nancy. Um, let's see, we are asking Public Works for an update on the Stormwater Master Plan. I uh, haven't heard back from them yet. Um, we are uh, going to provide a transcript of the minutes of the Planning Commission decision of the Cove in 2008 and possible video which may not necessarily be an agenda item, but we're gonna provide that anyway, so we'll see. Um, an idea I, I had was how to, you know, that staff will head up ways to increase public participation at these meetings and get an audience. Um, and I, you know, that's just an idea that I wanna brainstorm on. Um, the, we, want an update on the Willamette Falls Legacy Project from Metro and city staff. Uh, they have some new staff that are here at the city working on the next phase on the Riverwalk, and I 
want to coordinate with them and get them before you for a presentation. Um, so that's future agenda items that I've listed so far. As far as news goes, um, we've, we're coming up on the Enhancement Day, Oregon City Enhancement and Arbor Day celebration. When is that? Um, let me just pull that up. Um, on. Uh, where I just had it. April 20th. The Okay, the event is going to be Saturday, April 6th, 2019, from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the end of the Oregon Trail Interpretive Center. Um, it will, you can pre-register online, receive a free T-shirt. Uh, beginning at 8.30 is pre-registration. There will be a guest speaker who's going to share information about the trees of the trail. Fruit seeds, fruit seeds and grafted trees that journeyed into the Oregon Territory. Then there'll be a tree shrub flower planting and spreading bark, uh, various informational booths and light refreshments. Please bring tools for personal use, including gloves, shovels, pruners, loppers, rakes, wheelbarrows, push brims, etc., and dress for the weather. So that's uh, mainly at in the Oregon Trail. I think that's where it's staged. There's probably going to be some other oh, satellite so. type things going on, but it doesn't state what those are here. Okay. Um, so it is being managed through the Parks Department and the Code Enforcement Department, as it has oh, been. Oh, is this your normal citywide thing? Yeah, it is. With John point. John Waverly is um, also incorporating the Arbor Day tree planting as well. Uh, and there's support from Oregon Community Trees and Tree City USA. Uh, so they've given some additional support for public involvement and in plant plants as well. So that's going on. Um, an idea that I had was quarterly, we are asked to give information or articles for the trail news. And uh, it's published through uh, our community services department, and they have a editorial staff contracts, and they will take articles up into a certain deadline. So if the NRC would like to suggest uh, in the future articles to incorporate into that uh, any quarterly edition, I thought it'd be a good way to get um, further involvement. In the NRC. Maybe get something about the heritage tree once we get this trees, oh, right. invasive exactly. species, yeah. ivy removal. Yeah. And yeah. actually, you know, they have a nice glossy cover. Let's do it so that we actually get one of our heritage trees on the cover. Yeah, oh. we can, you can suggest a really nice, uh, good, good quality photos for the cover. Um, so that's a possibility too. Yeah. Cool. Um, as you may know, Denise McGriff has been appointed to the Open City Commission position, um, and that's really exciting. Um, bringing her experience to bear from all her volunteer activities over the last few years, and including a lot, a lot of time dedicated to the Planning Commission. Yes. So that's great, and uh, she'll be a, a great asset. And that's all. That's all I have. Oh, I wanted to bring up one other thing. If you have any questions. That I forgot. And mm -hmm. now I forgot it again. The Vivi and I. Uh, Squirrel. <laughs> oh, um. <clears throat> Would it be about the Mother's Day sale that the Lair at Park's no. doing of plants? No. No. They're okay, doing yeah. Sale. yeah, they're um, doing a plant sale in, um, on the Mother's Day at Lair at Park. Oh, at Lair at Park? Yeah. It is gone. Um, <laughs> I was just wondering if that was on your mind. <laughs> well, I send out of that email for future agenda items. So if you just, when right. it comes to you, shoot me back an email and I'll get back to the group. But if you want to. Well, since so you're not going to come up with something. I'm not. But then, what do you mean? <laughs> you had your time. <laughs> 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 you <laughs> we submitted for the historical society a joint grant to plants promenade all the way from the elevator to at least the hill above the bfw hall and we've made 
80 percent of that is now done and and wow. there are bulbs that are going to start blooming oh, immediately that's, you put the tulips we're the ones that did that and then yeah. i'm going in to look at the source of, of wildfire mixes tomorrow from a company that used to be called uh, hobbs and hopkins in portland where oh, they specialized in seed and so we'll be dressing that out with with uh, poppies and all sorts of stuff. Uh, they're, they're special mixes. I've got to look at what. But are they natives? Most at of it. the wildflower mixes are na natives to here. Yeah, right. natives there are actually there's a ones. there's several nurseries that do have native Oregon wildflowers. Right, seeds. they have both. But, there. Okay, they have, they have both all right. Sources okay. anyway. So uh, I want you to know that there should be a, a immediate effect of stuff that is blooming now because I wanted to see, to see an immediate result. But it has not been easy because we can't be outside the wall, which is my agreement. Right. So we have 20 foot long rakes, okay? <laughs> On aluminum poles, what? 20 foot long hose, 15 foot long rakes, uh, bam, uh, you know, uh, spring steel type rakes and so forth, and techniques like that to make it, make it safe. <laughs> and we've not pushed anything over the side onto the cars below, which is tricky, very narrow there. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. I was, I was yeah. really impressed. So, or onto the train for people. Or onto sense. the train. Yeah. So the trains I worry about less than I do the cars. Well, I don't know. You know but but you know, one way they the are going through a, <laughs> the train windshield. Yeah, anyway, so you should begin to see quite a result. And then part of that grant was to restore the grounds of the um, <clears throat> Museum of the Oregon Territory, which it's looking much better than it has a long time. They just haven't had mm -hmm. anybody to care for anything there. So that will be also dressed out with wildflowers, oh, too. Excellent. So especially so on the side that you see from 99E, there's a bluff that you look up that's full of grass. That's almost gone now. That'll be dressed out with wildflowers, too. So excellent. anyway, I never want to do this again. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so it's so tricky, you know. Yeah. And I try to get several contractors in there to do things, and they, oh, my God, we don't want anything to do with this. So well, 20 foot. Breaks work fine. Very good. <laughs> Maybe we can. Okay, we're done. Right. We're done. For oh, anything, nothing else to go to the order. Nope. <laughs>